Avatar is not a kid's show. I realized that while making this video because there are so many deaths in this franchise. Since making a video marking every death in Harry Potter and Hunger Games, a bunch of you asked me to make one for Avatar The Last Airbender, and these are pretty fun to make, so I thought, why not? I'm going to mark every death in Avatar The Last Airbender, The Legend of Korra, all of the Avatar graphic novels, all of the tie-in comics, and all of the books and novels, and I'm going to put it all in chronological order. This timeline will go over more than 10,000 years, so it's safe to say this took me a long time to put together. Before we start, there are going to be spoilers. Everything that is on the screen right now is what I went through to make this video and what will be spoiled in this video. If you haven't seen or read some of these, I split the video up into sections so you can easily skip over it. Now that that's out of the way, let's get this video started. So the first encounter we have of death in the Avatar timeline is actually the children victim of the warlord named Taz. This was long before the Fire Nation came into existence, and Taz ruled over what was then called the Fire Islands. The Warlord demanded annual tributes from all of the villages in his territory, and when one village refused, he taught them a lesson by kidnapping all of the children. The kids were never seen again, which we can assume means that Taz killed them. And that brings us to the next encounter we had with death. All of the mothers in that village that lost their children died of sadness, losing the will to live now that their kids were dead. Then that brings us to Taz himself. Soon after the mother's death, dark spirits called the Kimura Kage began to haunt Taz and his men. Every so often, the spirits would drift into the warlord's encampment in the middle of the night, and the next morning, a child would be gone. Out of fear, Taz's men abandoned him and his regime collapsed. Taz eventually died all alone with nobody around him, forced to pay for all of the lives and families he ruined. Lady Taianhe was the next to lose her life. She was a spirit during the age when spirits still roamed the mortal world. She watched over some land that was eventually taken over by humans who made a city there, and Tyane became very fascinated with the residents. Once a year, she would take the form of a human for a night and stroll the city's streets, and on one of these visits, she met the city's prince. She fell in love with him and decided that she always wanted to be with him. To make this happen, she willingly accepted her human form as permanent, knowing full well that it meant she would eventually experience human death. She married the prince, who later became king, and they lived in happiness for many years. After many years though, Lady Tyane eventually lost her life. However, though her human form died, because she was a spirit, she simply took on a new form. Next, we have Jaya, Yao, and the Huntsman, who were friends of the first Avatar, Avatar Wan. In The Legend of Korra, we saw that they picked fights with spirits, and eventually one of those fights led to all of their deaths. Avatar Wan is next. He was of course the first Avatar, and after spending his life trying to make everyone live in peace, the daunting task was too much for one lifetime, and he died after participating in a wicked battle. He apologized to Rava for failing to bring balance to the world, but she assured him that they would always be together through all of his lifetimes, and they would never give up, and as the first Avatar died, the next one was born. After Wan's death, we have the death of most lion turtles, or the Ancient Ones. They were hunted to near extinction over the thousands of years following the start of the Avatar cycle, and only one remained, who we later saw interact with Aang. Guru Lahima is the next death. We learned about him from Zaheer. He's an air nomad guru who discovered the secret to weightlessness, and this allowed him to unlock the airbending ability to flight. This allowed Lahima to become untethered from the earth, and he lived the last 40 years of his life without ever touching the ground again. And after Lahima, we have someone who actually shared the opposite view on life. His name was Shokin. He was an ancient philosopher around the same time as Lahima, but he was not as popular, as he had some controversial things to say, such as slaying the spirit of enlightenment if you meet it on your journey. He eventually died of old age, and after his death, he was considered to be very foolish to some, but very wise to others. But either way, both Avatar Kiyoshi and Avatar Yang Chen both studied his works. Next, we have Shu. He was one of two people to become the first ever earthbenders alongside his lover, Oma. You might know their story as the Cave of the Two Lovers. They used their earthbending to make elaborate tunnels to be together in secret, as their two villages were enemies. One day, however, Shu did not show up, and Oma learned that he had been killed in a battle that involved their two villages. Shu's legacy lived on, however, as his love Oma formed a new city, and combining their two names, they named it Omashu. Avatar Sito was next. 
he was an interesting avatar as he opted for an extremely unusual approach. Instead of taking control himself or forcibly trying to enforce his decisions, which he of course could as the avatar, he instead joined the Fire Nation's government and worked his way up. He advanced in the ranks according to his achievements rather than any of his birthrights, and eventually he was appointed Grand Advisor to the Fire Lord. With that title, he fixed the government financially and made it stable, which was needed desperately. He lived out his days serving the Fire Lord and working for the Fire Nation government until he died of old age, and he was reincarnated as Yang Chen. And that brings us to the next person to die in the timeline, Avatar Yang Chen. She was one of the best avatars in history, but like all avatars, she passed on. For Yang Chen, it was by old age. And she was reincarnated as the next avatar, Avatar Kurik. Next is Umi. She was the love of Avatar Kurik's life, and eventually the two got married. However, one day as she crossed a bridge, she was pulled down by an unseen force into the water. Kurik jumped in after her, but he couldn't rescue her in time. The spirit known as Ko the Face Stealer had lured and trapped Umi forever to punish Kurik for his arrogance. Now, technically, she's not dead, but she may as well be. As of now, she was trapped for all eternity, and when Kurik finally did face Ko, he did not destroy the spirit, because destroying the spirit would destroy Umi as well. But she's gone forever, doesn't have her body, as of right now is not coming back, so to me, that counts as death. Avatar Kurik was the next to die in the timeline. Kurik died at the age of 33, making him the youngest avatar to lose his life. On his deathbed, he gathered his closest friends around him and told them to find the next avatar and do right by them. As I said, Kurik continued to roam in the spirit world looking for Umi after his death, but I honestly think that if a human dies and goes to the spirit world without their mortal body, that should count as a death. Next is the Fifth Nation Rulers and Soldiers. The Fifth Nation was a group of pirates. We don't know the names of any that died, but we do know that a few of them were family members to a character named Tulok. To be more specific, Tulok's brothers and father, and their family ruled over the Fifth Nation. Breaking the treaty that Tulok's grandfather made, they invaded land that they were not supposed to, and they were met by an airbender named Kelsang, an old friend of Avatar Kurik's. Kelsang summoned a storm that turned into a catastrophic typhoon, and it sunk most of the fleet's ships, killing Tulok's brothers, father, and most of the fleet. And now the next death, Tulok. After this disaster of a mission, Tulok kept his life by ensuring he never left the Eastern Sea again. And because of this, he ended up dying of old age, and passed down his title as leader of the Fifth Nation to his daughter, Takaga. Next, we have Sulan. She was a member of the Kyoso clan, and one day she met Fire Lord Cheru, who immediately became smitten with her. The Fire Lord ended up dropping his first wife so he could marry Sulan, but shortly after, Sulan died giving birth to their son. She told her husband to name their child Zoru, as the Zo in the name was traditionally used by her Kyoso clan, and the Fire Lord granted her her last wish after she died, naming their son Zoru. And that brings us to Cheru's death. The Fire Lord died of old age and was remembered for the plentiful harvest during his reign, which came to an end after his death, and people began referring to him as Cheru of the Green Fields. His son Zoru then took the throne after his demise. And now we get to the parents of Avatar Kiyoshi. Her father Hark and her mother Jessa both abandoned her when she was young, and they traveled with a group known as the Daofi, but they both eventually died prematurely from a terrible fever. When Takaga, the leader of the Fifth Nation, set up a meeting with Yun, who everybody believed to be the Avatar, Takaga revealed her trap and went after Yun and his companions. This led to the death of one of Yun's men named Amok, who was a waterbender disguised as an earthbender, but the disguise did not fool Takaga, who impaled him with an icicle. Then we have the deaths of almost all of the Fifth Nation when Kiyoshi sprang into action, using her earthbending to lift parts of the sea floor, destroying much of the fleet, either crushing them or drowning them, essentially ending the Fifth Nation for good, as they were either scattered or dead, and their leader Takaga was captured and locked up beneath Lake Laogai. Next we have Kelsang, who I mentioned before was a friend of Avatar Kurik. After finding out that Jianzu sacrificed Yun to a spirit, Kelsang told Kiyoshi to get behind him, and peacefully told Jianzu to stay away from them for good, as he was unfit to serve the Avatar any longer. Jianzu got angry though, and he earthbended a small piece of rock to slit Kelsang's throat, killing him instantly. As I just said, Jianzu sacrificed Yun to a spirit, and that spirit was known as Father Glowworm, and that's the next death in the timeline. 
When Yun woke up in the spirit world, he and the spirit fought each other, and realizing that it would be a draw, they called for a truce. Father Glowworm proposed that Yun get some of his spirit power in return for Yun bringing him innocence to feed on. But as soon as Yun accepted, he turned on the spirit and made the floor come up and crush Father Glowworm to death. Yun then ate the spirit's eyeball to absorb the spirit's essence and gain the spirit's power. Next, we have Zhu Ping On, the deranged leader of the Yellownecks. When he and Kiyoshi were fighting, he took her down with lightning, which was unheard of at this point in time, and he then shot Rangi, Kiyoshi's girlfriend, with lightning. When Kiyoshi saw this, she entered the Avatar state and lifted Zhu Ping On into the air. She then dropped him and murdered him as he died on impact. When Yun made his way back to the mortal world, he was asked to leave his shop when he asked for water but had no money to pay for it, and he was then made fun of by the owner who asked him to waterbend knowing full well that he was not the avatar. This made Yun snap, and he used his bending to make the pots around the tea house become blades, and he used those blades to kill the shop owner and his five patrons. Then for our next death, he went back to a well where earlier a bodyguard had told him that he could not have any water, and Yun killed him too. Next is Foreshadows Guan. After Rangi had fought him and broke his leg, he was resting in bed when Jianzu came to him. After he refused to talk, Jianzu rolled up his sleeves and killed him. When Jianzu walked out and was asked if he found anything, he said he only found a corpse, referring to Guan's dead body. A chamberlain named Huey and his sages had a meeting with Jianzu, and just as Huey started to put the pieces together that Jianzu had killed Yun, the thought to be Avatar, Huey had blood drip out of his nose. Moments later, Huey and all of his sages died from their tea that Jianzu had poisoned. The next to die was Lek. Kiyoshi, Rangi, and Lek were ambushed and hit by Shirshu spit darts, rendering them all paralyzed. When Kiyoshi could finally move again, she ran over to Lek to feel his pulse, but it was not there. Lek had an allergic reaction to the dart, and he died a slow, painful death while paralyzed. Now we have Jianzu, who I must say takes the blame for a lot of deaths on this list. While Kiyoshi and Jianzu were fighting, the two were putting so much energy into fighting each other that they were both unable to move or speak. Yun then entered, and getting revenge for Jianzu sacrificing him to the spirit, he forced a rock through Jianzu's body. Yun then walked out, not even waiting for Jianzu to die, winked at Kiyoshi, and after Kiyoshi left the building, it collapsed on Jianzu. Next is Lu Beifong. Yun was on a quest for vengeance, determined to start a vicious crusade against anyone who would lie to him about his avatar hood. Yun went to Lu Beifong and murdered him, and he then dropped his dead body to the floor in the portrait gallery. Then we get to the next death, Chancellor Dayrin, the Chancellor of the Fire Nation. Yun was met by the Chancellor in the portrait gallery after he killed Lu Beifong, and Dayrin believed that Yun had nothing to earthbend. However, Yun bent the pigmen in the portraits around him, and he sent sharp pellets flying toward Dayrin. As the Chancellor wasn't wearing any armor, he was mortally wounded, and even when the world-renowned healer showed up, she considered him to be already gone when she arrived on scene. And now we come to the death of Yun. We got to see an epic battle between Yun and Kiyoshi, and after Yun stabbed Kiyoshi's girlfriend Rangi in the back, Kiyoshi used an advanced healing technique to drastically lower his body temperature, freezing his heart and lungs solid, and this took Yun's life, putting an end to his crusade once and for all. Shin the Conqueror was the next to lose his life. He was a horrible tyrant who was expanding his army to all corners of the continent. However, things got personal for Avatar Kiyoshi when he came to her homeland. He demanded their surrender, but Kiyoshi refused and instead split her home from the mainland. As his army ran away, Chin did not move, which resulted in him falling to his death. Avatar Kiyoshi was the next to lose her life, and she died at the old age of 230. Funnily enough, this is actually a mistake that the creators made early on in the show as they did the math wrong, making her way older than they meant to. But they've since rolled with it and have actually given us some explanation as to how she lived so long in the Kyoshi novels. The next death was Kyoshi's next life, Avatar Roku. One night in his old age, the volcano on his home island erupted, and he tried his best to fight it with his bending. His old friend slash enemy, Fire Lord Sozin, then arrived, and the two fought the volcano together. However, as the two were running, Roku was hit by the volcano's toxic gas, and it was more than his old body could handle. When he reached out his hand to Sozin, Sozin left him there to die so that he could go ahead with his plans without Roku's interference. Roku's dragon named Fang came down and wrapped himself around Roku as they were engulfed by the volcano. 
Sozin went ahead with his plans, and he used what is now referred to as Sozin's Comet to finish the war and wipe out all of the air nomads, killing all of those in the southern, northern, eastern, and western air temples, his hope being that he would kill the next Avatar. The characters who died that we know about include the five air nomad leaders, including Monk Yatso, who was pretty much Aang's caretaker, and also Monk Tashi and Monk Pasang. Then we have Aang's five friends from the flashbacks, including Jinju. We have Sister Elo, the mother superior of the Eastern Air Temple, and Monk Tang Zhu, who was known for completing a historic fast on Whale Tail Island that lasted over 98 days. And as for those airbenders that weren't at the air temples during the time of the attacks, in the comics, we learned about traps that were set for the surviving air nomads. They lured them in with what's called a stupa, an old air nomad sculpture, which then led them to man-made caves filled with old air nomad relics. This draws the surviving airbender in, thinking that they found other survivors, only to get captured by the Fire Nation and killed. Next is Fire Lord Sozin, who is responsible for more deaths than anybody else on this list. After realizing that the Avatar eluded him, he spent the rest of his life searching for him, but he died before he was able to find the last airbender. Another terrible legacy that Sosin left behind was the hunting of dragons, adding even more deaths to his victim list. People hunted the dragons to near extinction. The only reason they didn't die out was because of Sosin's grandson Iroh, who lied and said he killed the last dragon to protect the only ones remaining. Next, we have Kaya, Katara and Sokka's mother. When the Southern Raiders came to investigate the last waterbender in the village, Kaya lied and said that it was her to protect her daughter Katara. She told him that he could take her prisoner, but the commander named Yan Ra said that they were taking no prisoners, and he killed her on the spot, left there for Kaya's family to find her. In the comics, we saw that Sokka, Katara, and Hakoda buried her body on the outskirts of their village. Next is Lu Ten, Iroh's son. After joining the Fire Nation military, he served under his father as the Fire Nation invaded Ba Sing Se. During the siege, Lu Ten lost his life in combat against the Earth Kingdom. He was mortally wounded around the same time that Iroh breached the city's outer wall, and after he had done that, he heard of his son's life-threatening situation. Iroh rushed to see his son, but Lu Ten died of his injuries before he got there. The next person to lose their life was Fire Lord Azulon. After his son Ozai disrespected his older brother Iroh and his fallen son, Azulon was going to punish Ozai by taking his firstborn, Zuko. Ozai's wife Ursa discovered this, however, and wanting to save her son's life, she made a deal with Ozai. If Ursa left for good and crafted an untraceable poison that Ozai could use on his father, he would let Zuko live. After Ursa made the poison, Ozai slipped it in Azulon's glass, and Azulon passed away that night, allowing Ozai to take the throne. Next, we have the prison rig captain, who the warden threw overboard in the middle of the treacherous ocean. Then, not long after that, we saw the warden and five other Fire Nation soldiers get tossed into the ocean, and considering the fact that the warden said he couldn't swim, it's safe to say that they died too. Then we have Han, who was thrown overboard by Admiral Zhao when he was leading the attack to defend the Northern Water Tribe. And seeing as he wasn't a waterbender, he most likely did not make it out alive, either dying on impact in the water or drowning to death. Zhao also killed the next victim, which was Tui, the moon spirit. He hit the spirit with firebending, trying to take the moon, the thing that gave the waterbenders their power out of play. Then we have the 50 or so Fire Nation soldiers that Aang and La took down when they merged. Just for the record, I thought about putting Admiral Zhao on this list because it seemed like he died, and we thought he did for a long time. But we learn in the Legend of Korra that he was actually dragged down to the spirit world where he spent the next 70 years in the fog of lost souls. So unlike Umi, whose death I did count because she lost her body and her mind forever, Zhao was still in his same skin, just punished for life in the spirit world for trying to kill the moon spirit. So I'd say he's still alive. Moving on, we have Princess Yue. She gave her life to save the moon spirit that Zhao had killed. She was able to do this because the spirit had given Yue life as a baby, and she gave that life back to restore the moon spirit's life. Next is Professor Zay, the man that went with Team Avatar to Wan Chi Tong's library. While in there, Wan Chi Tong himself discovered that they had broken his trust, so he sank the library to prevent humans from accessing his knowledge ever again. As Team Avatar made their escape, Zay decided that he would rather spend the rest of his life in the library learning all he could, as finding the library had been his life's work. He of course eventually died down there, running out of food, water, and supplies. Next, we have the circus ringleader who Appa sent flying during his escape. This dude flew at least 100 feet in the air, so he probably died on impact when he hit the ground. Then we have Jet. 
It's a big mystery to Avatar fans as to whether he died or if he lived, but all of the evidence points to him actually dying. After Long Fang smashed a giant chunk of earth right into his chest, an injury that is pretty much always life-threatening, Jet could not move, he could not be healed by Katara, and we were told that Jet himself knew he was not okay. We also never saw Jet again, even though we saw the Freedom Fighters many more times after this incident. Next, we have Aang. He was fully dead after Azula struck him with lightning while in the Avatar state. Aang later said to Katara, I didn't just get hurt, did I? It was worse than that. I was gone, but you brought me back. Katara used the special spirit water from the North Pole and from the pond that the Moon Spirit resided in, and because it was such special water, it was able to do something that normal water could not, and Katara was able to waterbend with it to heal Aang and bring him back to life after he was fully dead. Combustion Man, or Sparky Sparky Boom Man, was killed while on the hunt for Aang. Sokka hit him on the head with his boomerang right where his seismic blast came from, and after this hit, his next attempt to shoot Team Avatar blew up in his face. Literally. But if the explosion did not kill him, the fall along with all of the rocks from the air temple did. Next we have Gillick. He was the leader of the rebellion in the Southern Water Tribe who was opposing Hakoda, Sokka and Katara's father, who was now head chieftain. During a big fight between Team Avatar and the Rebels, the bridge they were on snapped. Gillick was being held up by Hakoda and Hakoda's girlfriend Melina, and Gillick told Hakoda that even if he has to lose, Hakoda would not win, and as he said this, he fell to his death. Next is Bosco the Bear. You might remember him as the Earth King's best friend, and this might be one of the most morbid deaths on this list. After the Earth King died, Bosco was eaten by the King's daughter, Hao Ting, and rumors of the bear's demise spread like wildfire across the Earth Kingdom, setting the stage for their new queen. Not a great first impression. Next is Iroh. Now, technically, he did not die, because before he did, he chose to ascend into the spirit world, but I'm gonna count his death, because he left his mortal body behind to do so, which was not the case for Zhao, and that's why his death did not count, but Iroh's does. This might be one of my favorite decisions that The Legend of Korra made, because it's just so perfect. It is absolutely something that Iroh would do. And seeing him interact with Korra and then Aang's kids was great to see. Next is Yakon, one of the most powerful crime lords to threaten Republic City, and one of, if not the most skilled bloodbender, rivaled only by his children Noatok and Tarlok. After he got his bending taken away by Aang, he started to groom his sons to seek revenge for him, teaching both of them how to bloodbend. One day, however, Noatok turned on him and ran away. They searched for days to find him, but they never did, and they assumed him dead. Yakon did not think that Tarla could get revenge the way he imagined or the way Noatok would, and losing all hope now that Noatok was gone, he passed away a few years later at a premature age. Next, we have Avatar Aang, for real this time. Aang lived to have kids and have a happy family with Katara, but the 100 years he had spent frozen in the iceberg while in the Avatar state drained much of his inherent life energy, and by his later years, the strain of this began to weigh heavily upon his body. Eventually, at a relatively young biological age of 66, Aang passed away and was reincarnated into Avatar Korra. The next death to occur was Yasuko Sato, Asami Sato's mother. When Asami was six years old, the Agni Kai Triad raided the Sato estate, and one of the intruders took Yasuko's life during the break-in. Next, we have San and Naoki, the parents of Bolin and Mako. One day while on the streets of Republic City, the two were mugged and killed by a firebender, orphaning both Mako and Bolin. Sokka was the next death to occur, and after accomplishing much in his life, he passed away from old age. Next is Tarlok and Noatok, or Amon. The brothers escaped on a boat, ready to start a new life together, but Tarlok realized that they had to end their family bloodline, ensuring that there would be no more bloodbenders who could bend at any time, as their bloodline had caused so much harm. He put an electrified glove over the fuel cap, and he committed suicide, killing both himself and his brother. Next, we have all of the fishermen that were aboard the ship that the spirit brought down, first taking one right off the deck, and then sinking the entire ship and everyone on board. Next is Rava. She was killed by Unalak, who hit her repeatedly with a waterbending whip until one final devastating blow. She was brought back to life, however, as light is always found in darkness. Jinora's spirit manifested and released a blinding light from the dark avatar's body, and Rava was reborn from that light. 
Unalak and Vati were next, and they died after fusing together to become a dark avatar. After ripping the light source out of their chest to recreate Rava, Korra's spirit bent Unalak and Vatu, vanquishing them both. Next are all of the White Lotus guards that Zaheer and his allies killed to break themselves out. I counted 8 when he broke out Kazan, 6 when they broke out Mingwa, and 3 when they broke out Pali. Next we have Aiwei. When his mind was in the spirit world, but his body was in the mortal world, Zaheer got mad that he had been followed and chucked him into the fog of lost souls where he would be condemned to spend eternity in this mental prison just like Zhao. The reason why his death counts in my book though is because like Iroh, he left his body behind. Meanwhile, Zhao was still in his mortal body when he was sent to the fog of lost souls. So that's why I don't consider Zhao dead even though he had a very similar fate as Ai Wei. Next, we have the Earth Queen, Hao Ting. She was killed when Zaheer used airbending to remove the air from her lungs, suffocating her to death. He did this mostly as a statement to create a new world order, and he even announced her death to all of the Earth Kingdom claiming that he was the one to take her life. Next is Pali. She was killed when Su bended a slab of metal around Pali's head just as she was going to combust, and just like Combustion Man, she was killed by her own blast, having it blow up right in her face. Ming Hua was the next to die, and she was killed when Mako shot lightning in the pool she was in, electrocuting her to death. Gazan died after Ming Hua, and he died while sacrificing himself to take Mako and Bolin down. He brought the cave down with his lava bending, but the brothers escaped while Gazan was not as lucky. He was crushed to death by the fallen cave. Next are the watchtower guards that were blown up by the laser from the mecha giant. Then we have Hiroshi Sato. While opening a hole in the mecha giant, he realized he was out of time, told Asami he loved her, and ejected her from the hummingbird suit. He sacrificed himself to ensure the mecha giant and Kuvira were stopped, redeeming himself after all of the harm he had caused in his life. And finally, we have Viper and the others who opposed Taguga. When Takuga took over the triple threats, he killed the then leader Viper and killed anyone else who opposed him. And there you have it, all 21,375 deaths in all of Avatar canon. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just here to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed to the left. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other things like previews and behind the scenes, become a patron today. Also, you can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki. I also do some fun stuff on TikTok and Twitter that I think you guys would really enjoy if you enjoy what I do here on this channel. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe, and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.